you know, nowadays, we carry around so much stuff. <laughs> so we need a pocket for everything, right? So patch pockets, face pockets, pockets with zippers. Oh, we're going to talk about all kinds of pockets today. I'm Kathy. This is Sewing Tech Talk. And let's do some pocket pizzazz. Pockets. Don't you wish everything had pockets? Nowadays, oh my gosh, I need a pocket in everything I own. I wish my pajamas had pockets. So we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of different pockets today. They're really kind of fun and easy to make. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of different kinds, and you can add them to whatever you want. I'm putting them on the inside of a tote bag, and I really enjoy putting them inside. I like making purses, putting special pockets wherever I want because it keeps everything organized and it's easy to get to stuff. Also, we're going to talk about some precision top stitching because precision top stitching is a sewing skill you're going to appreciate that you learned or experienced. Now, we're going to practice it on these pockets that are inside my tote and it's a great way for you to practice it as well because once you practice that skill, then you know how to do it. And it's on the inside of the tote. If your first attempt isn't that great, it's okay. Only you're going to see it. So we're going to do some different types of pockets. We're going to do what I call patch pockets, pockets where the bag of the pocket is on the outside of the fabric. We're also going to be doing some faced pockets where the bag of the pocket is on the inside behind the garment or in the lining. And trust me, those are going to be really, really easy. Let's talk about some of the supplies that we need. We have a lot of pockets to stitch. And then we're going to get over to the Baby Lock Vesta and do some pocket sewing. So let's start out with our top stitch. Uh, supplies because precision top stitching you're really going to appreciate it. So I am going to use some, uh, this is Rayon uh, Madeira, it's the Decora thread and it's a 12 weight thread and I'm going to be doing top stitching so you better believe I'm going to be using some top stitch needles. These are size 90 because that's the size that will accommodate the 12 weight thread. So top stitch needles in size 90, some 12 weight thread, and some other things that you're going to need. Of course, you'll need the fabric to go on the outside of the pocket. All kinds of fabrics will do. I'm using some vinyl. This is vinyl, and oh, there's all kinds of vinyl out there. And it sews really easy. This is a Kimberbell product. They make some really pretty stuff. It's for their, they make some really cute uh, machine embroidery quilts, but, there's, but, their, uh, but their products can also be used for just regular sewing as well. So here's some pretty vinyl. It's clear with some glitter in it. They make some plain vinyl. Now I'm using the plain vinyl for a patch pocket here where it's a business card kind of a pocket. So these are both different patch style pockets where the fabric's on the outside edge. But those faced pockets, you won't believe how easy they can be. So we're going to do one with the zipper on the inside. So here's the zipper and if you've been a little bit tip, maybe I don't want to play with the zipper, you won't believe how easy this zipper is and it looks really beautiful. We're going to be using some wash away uh, tape to hold that zipper in place. Now. You will need some interfacing for the back of that zipper and for some of the other pockets as well. I use Dreamweave Fusible. Now on the back of that pocket, I just use some iron-on uh, cutaway stabilizer for the back of the zipper area. And if you have little scraps, they work great for this. Now I did order some special fabric that didn't come in in time for the video. I'm going to be making a cell phone pocket and there is fabric called RFID. That's the kind of fabric, it's a special one, and it's used for blocking. So if you're making like a, a tablet case or something like that, it's supposed to be the type of fabric that blocks people from accessing your information when you're carrying it around. I, you can look it up on the internet, that's where I ordered mine. So it's kind of fun. I'm going to put it on my cell phone pocket because, you know, what the heck. All kinds of fabrics you can use. You can use all kinds of coordinating or matching fabrics. Now, for my waterproof pocket, I'm using a fabric that has, that's the initials P-U-L. I know there's a lot of initials today, right? This is a very soft waterproof fabric. And like I said, it's P. U L. This is the kind they use for the diaper covers and I'm going to be putting it on the inside of my water bottle fabric. Now I'm using the Baby Lock Vesta today. Don't forget we're going to be sewing but it's also an embroidery machine and you can make your 
pockets pretty fancy. Here's a llama that's built into the Vesta. Isn't it cute? Now this is a pretty aggressive pocket. I'm making a tote for all my sewing supplies and this is where my rulers will go. But look at how cute that llama is. So embroidery can make any pocket special. So let's see, what else are we going to do? Oh, remember, you can use all kinds of fun fabrics. You can use the vinyls. Uh, you can use that PUL. Here's my water bottle pocket. We're going to put some elastic in the top to hold that water bottle in place. But you can get a little crazy. So I'm actually making a Fritos pocket. This is maybe where I'm going to carry my snacks. And can you imagine a little a kid's tote bag or lunch bag? Wouldn't they love a little pocket like that on their bag? I think they'd be the top of the lunchroom. What about cork? Cork would make a really fun, very fun pocket. They make all kinds of sewable cork now. And you can even use your own fabric if you want to pick and make it a little bit more waterproof. They have vinyl that you can cover your own fabric with to make it a little bit more waterproof. So we have all kinds of pockets we need to do. What I've done is I marked out my inside of my tote bag approximately where I want my pockets to be. I had a little bit too much fun, but we really have to get to the machine to sew all these because we have a lot of pockets to sew. So let's head on over to the Vesta. We're going to put some pockets together. I'm going to show you the basics of that. I'm going to show you some precision top stitching. Don't forget I have a handout for this and all of my videos. So it's going to go through the process of doing this. If you don't see the details when I'm sewing them at the machine, go ahead and get the handout. It talks about all these type of pockets and maybe a couple others besides. So let's head over to the Vesta because we have a heck of a lot of pockets to sew. Now let's do our patch pocket. We're going to talk about a faced pocket and I'm going to show you what a buttonhole pocket looks like. So a, a patch pocket is the pocket you'd have probably on your shirt out, outside of your, it's very familiar pocket to everybody. Basically what it is, it's just a pocket sewn on to the front. The bag of the pocket, the pocket part that holds stuff, is on the outside of the fabric, like a patch. So if you want to do that, you can actually just make it a single layer. When you do that, you're going to sew this top part down. You're going to press it well before you put it on there. If you need to press a fun curved edge, you can make yourself a cardboard template and that's going to help you get that curve, but press it well before you stitch it down. And then when you put precision top stitching on it, it really looks good. You can also just take two pieces of fabric, sew around the edge, leave an opening, turn it through, and then you have a lined pocket to go on there. Super simple process. Now if you're going to use a different material like I talked about at the beginning, a vinyl, something like that, Vinyl doesn't necessarily have to be created with that, uh, with that, like a, like that, the two pieces together. Literally, I can just sew right along the edge because this edge does not fray. Now, for sewing on vinyl or a really cool free toe pocket, what you're going to do is you're going to use a Teflon foot, or these are the high performance feet that are, th these work great, the Ultra T high performance feet. They're made of a, of a resin and they are, they are slick and there's no friction when you're sewing down. So I would use these for, for vinyl. They also work for your regular sewing as well. But precision top stitching really makes the difference. Now, that's just a simple patch pocket. Really, really easy. Let's talk about that face pocket, which I think in some ways is a little bit easier. Now, a face pocket, instead of the bag of the pocket being on the outside, the bag of the pocket is on the inside, either covered by lining or just on the inside of your garment or tote bag or whatever. So how do you make those? Well, what you basically do is you have a, an entire pocket instead of just that part on the outside. So this is going to be the pocket part. You need an entire pocket, the front and the back, because remember it's hanging loose on the back of the garment or the tote bag. So you need that. And what you need to do is stitch an opening. So what I do is I take a piece of interfacing because this opening does need to be stabilized and I mark that opening on the stabilizer. And notice it's on the actual item itself. So I mark that opening and basically you just stitch around it with a straight stitch. Now this opening can be kind of any size and any shape really. You'll just need nice stabilizer to hold it in place. 
once you stitch around that outside edge, you're going to have to clip the hole because we're going to turn this facing to the inside and we need an opening for our pocket. So you're going to cut a slit in the middle, but you are going to cut towards the two separate corners. You want to cut very close to the corner, but not through the stitching. If you actually do cut through the stitching, just stitch around again, just to make sure you have stitching all the way around. Pretty simple process. Now what we're going to do is take this facing to the inside. So, notice that it was stitched with right sides together, and just take the facing to the inside part. Turn it through. And what you're going to have is you're going to have a lovely opening. There we go. Now, that pocket, the back of the pocket's going to come up and the back, the pocket bag's going to come up on the back. Now, this could be a contrasting fabric and this would be really cool, wouldn't it? To have a different color coming up in here. This is going to need to be pressed very, very well and probably top stitched down. We're going to use our really good, elegant top stitching techniques that we're going to talk about in a second to stitch this down. So we're going to stitch around there. What does that look like? Well, it looks kind of like this. So when you stitch all around there, the fabric's going to be pulled away and you're just going to be stitching around with some really elegant top stitching. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could put some sort of a fusible in there to hold that facing to the back. Once that is complete, we're going to have to pull that back of the pocket up. So here's the back of the pocket. It was top stitched down just through that top two layers and then the pocket's going to be pulled up just like this. Now it's just simple sewing. You're just going to stitch here, here, and here to hold the pocket together. Now if this is a pocket that's hanging loose behind maybe a garment, you're going to want to clean finish those edges. But this pock, this lining is going to be totally hidden, so I don't even have to do that. So you're going to stitch around there, around there and there, and voila, you have a pocket. Now what about putting that zipper in? Let me get this out of the way so it's not in our way. Now what's kind of important is you can kind of layer these pockets because the pockets hang behind. You can actually totally layer them. So while we're here, let's look at the back of this zipper. Now the front of the opening of this zipper, I wanted it to go around the zipper, just around the zipper teeth. So what I did is I took my interfacing before I fused it to the back of my lining fabric and I drew around the zipper teeth so I knew exactly how long the zipper was and how wide those zipper teeth were. Once I did that, I fused it to the back of my fabric and I just sewed around that box like I showed you earlier and that created a small little opening that was the perfect size for my zipper. Now on the back of the zipper, to make sure everything is held in place, I use a wash away tape. Now a wash away tape is literally, it washes away, but it's sticky on both sides. One side will stick and the other side has a paper that you tear away. And it's gonna hold this zipper perfectly in place. One thing that's nice, it's kind of repositionable, and once you get it stitched in, the item stitched in, if I just get it washed, it just literally goes away. So that holds that in place. Now let's look at the right side. Now, while we're here though, here's the rest of the pocket ready to come up to form my pocket. Okay? Now, we need to do some precision top stitching around our, around our zipper so it looks really, really good. Now in the machine, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the machine, I'm going to thread my machine, I've threaded my machine with, I've threaded my machine with Decora 12-way thread because it looks really cool. And I've inserted that size 90 top stitch needle into the machine. Now I'm attaching my zipper foot because I want to stitch real close going around the absolute edge. And I'm going to increase my stitch length just a little bit because I want this decorative thread to really show out. So I've gone up to about a 3.5 on my stitch length. Another thing that I find really helpful is this feature on the machine called Pivot. What Pivot does is it, when you stop sewing, it leaves the needle in so that you can uh, pivot or adjust, but it raises the foot so you can easily adjust the fabric. So I've engaged both of those, lengthened my stitch. Now, let's sew around this zipper. 
So here is my zipper foot. It attaches in two different places. So I have attached it onto the right hand side and I'm going to be stitching with the tall item, which is my zipper, to the right hand side. And you can see from this foot it lets me get really close to that. Now when I sew, I am going to stitch pretty close to that edge and I'm going to be doing some precision sewing. I do have that pin in there just to kind of hold it and I'm going to double check that I like the position of the zipper teeth from that edge. Now here's something to consider. I've chosen a zipper with a pretty aggressive little zipper pull here, right? And this part of the zipper, it's pretty big. And this is also a metal zipper, so I make sure I don't want to stitch into it. So I've placed it so I'm not going to do any of those things. I have pulled the zipper open and I'm going to start in the bottom middle. Once I get part way through, I'm going to pull that zipper pull out of the way. So even if it even if I have a foot on there that sews next to something tall, it's not going to get in the way. So let's see if I can sew some precision sewing. I've kind of determined the length that I want it to be and I'm going to hold my tongue a certain way and I'm going to concentrate because this is really going to show. So let's see if I can do it. Now see how the machine lifted that foot up? What I can do is my zipper pull should clear that now that the foot is up. Now I'm going to stitch all the way to that edge. Now because the pivot feature is engaged, the foot raised and the needle stayed in, I'm going to turn and see if I'm the right distance. And it looks like it's just about right. Once again, I've got to turn and make sure I'm the right distance away. I think we're pretty good. Let's clear that zipper pull. Now when I come around this final corner, I'm just going to make sure I'm in line with my initial stitching. So far it looks pretty good. Now normally I would use my scissors to clip the thread, but I'm going to pull these long decorative threads to the back. So I'm really just going to do needle up, pull away, and clip my thread. So let's see how I did. Well that looks pretty good. It's a pretty fancy zippered pocket and it really didn't take me that long. So a faced pocket can be pretty simple and putting a zipper in it, it's just a matter of placing it under there with wash away thread and doing that really pretty top stitching that you've been practicing anyway. Now I promised you there's another kind of different <laughs> pocket and it's called a buttonhole pocket. And let me show you just what that looks like. So don't be afraid of buttonholes. I've actually made a whole video on the incredible buttonhole pocket. It's in the archive of my videos and there's a handout that goes through it really in great detail. But this is basically what it looks like. So the bag of the pocket is on the back just like it is for that faced pocket. But the fabric starts on the back and it stays there. And the buttonhole just goes through the top. Let me show you what that looks like on the back. So there's that fabric that should look familiar by now. And notice how the buttonhole is at the top and the fabric comes up just like that. It's kind of like a faced pocket, but you're not pulling the fabric through. Notice how the fabric is face out, because when I fold it up, it's going to be right behind that buttonhole. 
Now all I have to do is cut a slit in my buttonhole and you know the rest. I'm going to sew right around here to create my magic little buttonhole pocket. And it's the perfect size for a pencil, all kinds of different stuff. So that is the buttonhole pocket and notice how the flap covers both it and the patch. It's really fun to design pockets and the inside of a tote bag or a purse or just about wherever is a fun place to practice your perfect precise top stitching and do all kinds of pockets. So thank you for watching me today. I hope you learned a little bit and are inspired to do some pockets. Try some on your pajamas because you know you need to carry stuff around even if you're kicking around the house. I'm going to send it off to George. He's going to tell you a heck of a lot more about the Vesta and thanks for watching me today and let's go out and pocket pizzazz. Thanks Kathy. Once again that was a great presentation. Don't forget to click on the link to download Kathy's uh, guide on that incredible project. Um, now every once in a while a machine is introduced to the industry that really offers high performance at a great value and that's the Babylock Vesta. Not only is it a great sewing and quilting machine but it also is an incredible embroidery machine. The embroidery features include a hoop that's larger than 10 by 6 and it has a, a wonderful color touchscreen. and look at this beautiful embroidery. Plus it removes the jump stitches and it even has a special uh, software program that sends your design via Wi-Fi right to the machine. Now that's not all though. For a sewing machine, it has the automatic fabric sensor that senses fabric from heavy denim to sheer fabric to working with elastic or even uh, a ribbing on a collar like a, a t-shirt knit. But quilting features, it actually will sew in different directions. We have some designs that are incredible for going down the sashing border. It has an automatic quarter inch so you can do your piecing, plus all kinds of wonderful decorative stitches. So as you see, this is an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Now, uh, we have a very special buy on this machine. This machine has a manufacturer suggested list price of $59.99. But right now, it's on sale for $39.99 and we're including free shipping across the country as well as uh, interest-free financing is available. I want to make some, a very special offer for those who are watching Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy and that is with a mystery bonus. Why is it a mystery bonus? Well I don't have a lot of them but I want to make sure those who are contacting me all you have to do is mention Kathy our Sewing Tech Talk with Kathy and I have this bonus value that is incredible. So give us a call at 1-800-865-9664 and discover how easy it is to get an incredible sewing, quilting, and embroidery machine. Bye for now.